Hi guys. This isn't going to be me with a cheery demeanour. This is me feeling the pain of knowing that we have two and a half, three weeks so far of Super League and all Rugby League being suspended. Now, this is not the worst thing that could have happened because it could have all been canned. The whole season could have just been created null and void and canned. But this is a serious, serious thing. There is big implications with this hold-up as well. Not just immediate, but further down the line of what could happen further down the leagues, further down at non-professional level, at some of the lower end. Now, already we already know that there are already some clubs that are going to be struggling as is. There's clubs that were already in financial difficulties at the start of this season and have been for the past few seasons. And some of these are quite big names. I'm not going to name them, but historically they have done well, but they have fallen on hard times. And there are clubs who could come into some money who may now not. Now also with the Challenge Cup as well, how is that going to go? Because we just had the draw. Now, I'm not going to utter much about the conspiracies that people are saying, the fact that this is a, just off of memory, I think the fourth or fifth year in a row, that it will be Wigan, Warrington, with each other again in the Cup. All right, yeah, we are big names, we are big clubs, but it's something to some people doesn't feel quite right even though to be honest i know they want to try to make it a spectacle and they want to do it now this was moved from new york to salford because of all this coronavirus stuff that's going on now again i do understand why they have can not cancelled but suspended the league but it stinks that we as a country have virtually no sports apart from very very few little places Darts venues are going to be quite quiet as well. That's going to be quite subdued. Pool halls, snooker. This is all going to become very low key. And it might end up being that we might end up finding a tiny little, a little sport somewhere or a little area where we can just hide out in and watch some obscure sport. Heck, it might even be that we might end up just finding a hill and jumping in a giant tractor tire and rolling down that. Having some old-fashioned fun as some people would say but no i totally understand but i feel pained and i feel the pain for those other clubs as well out there as well because this is not not ideal because we're still pretty much at the start of this season there's only been seven games played or well, seven rounds of all of this gone along with the Challenge Cup and everything that goes with it. Now, I totally do agree. We do need to implement things to slow the rate of infection with this virus. But there isn't much we can do. The eggheads are working on getting this bug worked out to break it down to its parts and work out how we can create a vaccine for this even if it means having to take a standard cold and flu vaccine and modify that if we could do that i have a habit of eating soothers and drinking tea i've got herbal teas downstairs that i'll sometimes drink all because one the job i do i'm on a phone all day so i'm talking to people constantly so that is my problem. If I rip my throat out watching a game, my work suffers. But I don't care about that because I'm having fun watching a game. But well, that is now at the, at the earliest, the 3rd of April, that this will be at least worked. Now, there is bits going along with the football as well. Now, is that going to work out as well? Because... For a while, the non-league system was helping us out sports-wise, but now they're having to shutter their games as well. Because there are some clubs that can have 
four, five, six thousand people at the attendance rather than in the lowest version or the lowest league for non-league or for league, professional league in football, they can have crowds which might only be one and a half, two thousand. So there is a crossover point there. And also with the government's rulings and how they basically putting this through as well. This is something we're all now looking at because there's rules now where we we can't have big gatherings in pubs and clubs so there's going to be some of the big venues that are going to be closed and there's going to be festivals which are coming up for flip's sake we're getting ready to to have St Pad's Day we can't do that we can't have any massive things with that Easter's coming up as well that's going to be a mess because there's going to be people going all over the place that's starting to slow down as well there's also some things with public transport as well. There's rules or people are coming up with their own rules and there's companies that are trying to stipulate rules around transports and things like that. And There's misinformation to information. There's people saying don't use public transport at all if you can walk to work or if you can walk to where you're going to. Now, I would... I can walk to work, it is 15 minutes up the road. I choose to use the bus because it's easier, especially when I get from work to get home. Because I'm not on the full late shift, I'm on a late version of the early. It's still darkish when I'm on the way home, and if it does decide to rain, like this British weather can do because of how crap it can be sometimes, I will jump on a bus. But there are times where some people have written their own rule and stipulated that young folk need to get off a bus and walk because a bus is for old folk. This is something that has been uttered many, many times, especially through the winter months as well. Just because you're younger and fitter doesn't mean that you always automatically need to get off a bus and buzz off and walk. But this is just something that some people have to work around but going back to the thing at hand with everything that's going on yeah i am a little bit pissed off because i am gonna miss doing this because i was starting to work on a format which was growing and we were starting to get traction we were starting to get the eyeballs onto it now all right yeah this is my own gripe but this is something i can work around and i can do this i can easily Put a halt on all the following subse <laughs> subsequent videos and get it working at a later date. But I'm also a bit shit scared that my Alton Towers trip is also now going to be canned. And that I've lost £200 because I'm not going to get it back. Because they won't reimburse me it. It's Merlin Entertainment. They reimburse nobody. This this virus is a serious problem for some people, but for people who are fit enough and healthy enough, like myself, it's just going to be an aggravating cold. It's just going to be a dry cough. It's just going to annoy my chest. Yeah, I'm probably going to cough up some more shit because it doesn't when you used to smoke for a while and you used to vape. But this is life. This is what we've now got to deal with. But this is now something that we all have to think about seriously now i am going to put this ending piece as a rallying call for when these games come back and when our first home games is back now most of you probably won't really heed this or you'll probably forget about it but every time there is a home game i am going to clip this piece out and put it somewhere i tell you now or every video i do following up or in, on a warm-up to it I'm going to do a rally call to you all. Now I call you all to arms. I call you all, follow your shield, follow your heart. I want to hear and see near capacity crowds at home every game for the rest of the season. Make this break disappear. Make it like this break never happened. I would like you all there. I would like you to follow me and come there. Get in there, take your seats, make a noise, and make this break worthwhile.
Make those players feel like they never left. Make them feel like this incident never happened. Gone will be the days of 10, 11, 13,000, if that. We're welcoming the days of 20, 21, 22, 23,000. That does include the away fans. I personally want to see that place, a theatre of noise, a wall of pain. Make it the Warriors' den. Make it a place that opponents do not want to come. Make their heads rattle from the noise. Make them think twice when they walk that field. Make them fear the ground they walk. Make them know they walk among warriors. Now, that is me with a pump up and that is my word of heed. Make your opponent wish they never turned up. Make it friendly, but make it painful. Now, as for the rest of you who have followed on who don't follow rugby, you might wonder why I've gone a little bit dark. But it's a serious thing. We need the feet. We need the people. We need you of everyone to support. We need you to put it in. We need you to follow your heart and follow your brain. When this is all over, take your seat, sit and watch and make the noise. Make this break worthwhile. Because we do not want to lose more clubs. There have been local clubs from here that could go under. There are clubs out in Yorkshire that could go under. We have international expansion on the horizon. We don't want this to fail. And also, to the people of the government, if we fall, you will come with us. I bid you farewell.